Okay, first and foremost, I want to say call Alal, Yahaw, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Rakar, Kodash. I will honor to the elders and pastor of Grimmel Stone, and salutations to all the brothers, especially in this work in sincerity and in truth. And the brother Yahaya from the GMS Kingston Jamaica camp, here with another quick lesson. And this one is going to be based on Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7, right? And it reads, there is that make it himself rich yet had nothing there there is that make it himself poor yet had great riches now as a carnal man if you look at it from a carnal perspective you would not understand what what it's mean the significance of this all right because because when you look at it you'd wonder why is it that if you have rich you really don't have nothing but if you're poor you have everything now, let's examine it from a spiritual perspective and expound on to why riches, riches mean that you, you're not, you don't have anything, so to, um, basically. Alright? So, first precept that I'm going to get to unravel <laughs> this um, mystery, so to speak, is Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. It says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase it with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Right? So because you say to yourself that you're rich, right? And you don't need of you don't you're not in need of anything, you're blinded to the fact that you you're actually poor. Because riches doesn't mean that you have eternal life and what's between riches physical wealth and wisdom what is the way to your matter right that's why you need that you that is why you need to to basically understand because when you have wisdom it gives you light to understand everything that's around you that's why the scripture tell you that wisdom is more moving than any motion it is it is the utmost gift from the heavenly father Right? Is the way to is the way to measure above any gift that you could ever have. When Solomon when when um Solomon was in the dream, right? What did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. And with wisdom he acquired wealth and everything else along with it. Right? So when you when you decide to hamper on the riches, right, you stay and your trust is in wealth, is in the physical wealth, right? You you're basically poor because you you're blinded to the wealth that is 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 of tremendous worth worth that is within the heavenly Father within the knowledge of the heavenly Father and if you don't have that you're basically dead and you're destroying yourself and you don't have nothing, right? This is Proverbs chapter. 8 verse 10 so receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it I wisdom dwell in prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions so wisdom it dwell with prudence and it finds out knowledge of witty in inventions now, in this time, in this current society, even throughout the years have passed and coming up into the future, where we're heading right now, right now we're heading into the, the, the time of World War III, we're heading into the time of Jacob's trouble, right? And you examine that, you realize that we're going into the day of wrath. And the scripture tell you, when you have wisdom, you're going to have prudence to see that that's where we're going, man, Right? And the witty inventions is going to be coming with, with basically the Heavenly Father filtering in your mind what you should do in that day, guiding you and basically providing your means to escape, sustaining your body, sustaining your mind that you don't bug out, yo. Because when your hope lies in, in, in wealth, in, the, in physical wealth, and you're not basically seeing that, that, that the wisdom is the one that is what's going to sustain it. That's why the scripture tells you in Isaiah 33 verse 6. It says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. And fear of the Lord your treasure. Alright. 
The scripture tells us if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you realize all these things, you now you make a great assessment of things. You realize that when you have physical wealth, you have nothing, man. But there is them, uh, there is them that make themselves poor and yet have great riches. No, poor means that you need, you need it of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. Right? This is Proverbs chapter eleven, verse four. So riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. So the righteousness of the heavenly Father is what's going to deliver from deliver deliver you from death because riches profit it not men. So what's what what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to be rich towards the heavenly Father, right? Don't be like the man in the parable. We build up barns and same of ease for him soul because there will be no ease for your soul, man. There will be no rest. Right? The only rest that you have, the only comfort that you're going to be having, man, is within the scriptures. And that is where true wealth lies. Right? This is Luke chapter 12, verse 16. It says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. I sa he said, and he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods, laid up for many years. Take, thee, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, and then whose shall those things be, which thou hast provided? So is he that laid up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. Because being rich towards God means that you're supposed to look out for your fellow members of this truth. Right? That is one of the main ways that you'll be rich towards God. Don't trust in uncertain riches right don't trust in things that are going to vanish and pass away but trust in eternity internally ter internally eternity right trust in that which lasts for eternity it's like your tongue twister a while ago right this is first Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 say Charge them that, that, that are rich in this world that they be not I minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. So you, your mindset is supposed to be just trust in the living God, right? Who give it us richly all things to enjoy. So he is the one that give it us richly everything to enjoy. And the scripture tell us, say yo, the scripture tell you in Proverbs, say yo, we're going to, in that day, we're going to laugh at them calamity when it comes. Right? So because why? Because we have the fear of the Heavenly Father. Them that trust them that trust in the living God have the fear of the Heavenly Father. And we know that we're gonna be able to trust in him, right? As the scriptures tell him, man. You see, they that dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place is the truth. Right? The secret place is also the chariots them. But right now, it, the scripture is twofold, so the secret place is this truth, man. Hiding yourself in this truth, covering yourself with the spiritual garment, the spiritual wealth of the Heavenly Father. Right? I say, Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, laying up, willing to communicate, laying up, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life so when you when you have this um when you when you when you have physical wealth you have asset don't set your mind upon it man because it's a vanish away but what you're supposed to do is be thinking about laying up treasures in um in heaven for yourself basically Zin, they may have a good foundation against time to come. Right? Now, which begs the question of what will happen to them that continually keep trusting that they're going to sustain themselves 
that them gonna build up things for to have ease for them soul because guess what this is not what this time in the truth is about the scripture telling um let us get that before this the scripture telling revelation chapter 3 verse 18 it says, i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire that thou mayest be rich right now what does it mean to buy gold tried into fire it means to purge yourself of dross what is dross dross is impurities present within in, in a precious metal right so purging yourself that is what this life is about and that is how you're gonna be rich man see purging yourself from all dross which is all sin all iniquity to the best of your ability to this time man right meditating upon the, the, the heavenly father right meditating upon the precept meditating upon the laws being an example of the righteousness of the heavenly father man right so reading again i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that thy shame that and that the shame of thy nakedness doest not appear and anoint thine eyes with an insult that thou may see. Okay? But when, but when, in the contrast of this is, when you trust in the physical wealth, when you are carnal mind, the scripture tells us that to be carnally minded is enmity with God. To be of carnal mind, what will happen to you? Right? So, let's see what will happen to you. Think, um, bear with me, brothers. This is Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. It said, They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. So the scripture telling in um first Timothy say oh, the say oh, the love of money is the root of all evil. So because you trust in the wealth, you trust in the physicality, you forget what is the true wealth, right? Which is the true wealth is to be rich in good deeds towards them that are that are of your members in, in, in this truth, in the in the power of the heavenly father. That is where true wealth lies, right? And with that you're also fully fulfilling the law. You're fulfilling the law that uh, love your love your neighbor as yourself right so with that i hope this lesson was edifying unto the leg i want to say call alal yahawa ba shem yaw shai ba shem rakar kwadash double honors to the elders and apostles of great Stone and salutations to all the brothers that's pushing this work in all sincerity and in truth shalom